This storm continues to gain intensity as we've been watching this powerful upper level low really starting to get its act together across Colorado. That's bringing some higher wind gusts across that region. Further to the south, we do have a short wave entering areas of Texas and the West Texas going to be linking up with a dry line and that should set the ignite supercell thunderstorms as we get later into the afternoon into West Texas there into western portions of Kansas and into Nebraska into the overnight time frame. They could also have their own high hail threat and tornadoes. And some of those could include some strong tornadoes within that region into the overnight time frame. And as we head into tomorrow, I think the intensity even amplifies even higher across Iowa, getting into Missouri there, back into Illinois and portions of Wisconsin where they have their own elevated hail threat and tornado threat as we head into tomorrow. So I appreciate all my subscribers out there. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button. This is my ultra channel, my secondary channel, where I put out bonus coverage, additional content on high impact events like I do today. So make sure you are subscribed so you can follow all my daily breakdowns. So here's the setup as for the hazard map. We've got a pretty busy Mac, folks. Those are red flag warnings, complements of that upper level low that's highlighted over Colorado. These areas are where the drought conditions are in West Texas and New Mexico, as well as into air eastern portions of Colorado. These are producing some very high wind gusts and unfortunately high fire danger as well. But further to the east, we do have a, a, a severe thunderstorm watch that is actually now in place into areas of Virginia, back into West Virginia. That does include the Baltimore, uh, the DC region, back into Dover. Those could have some potentially two inch uh, hail type variety within those supercells. And some of those could actually produce some 60, maybe even 70 mile per hour wind gust. And that goes into nine o'clock this evening. So let's highlight this threat. So further to the South, it's gonna be more of a bimodal threat. So you have the Southern flank, which is already kind of getting going down there into West Texas, those areas into Abilene, back into the Midland Odessa region, portions of Lubbock, especially there in the Wichita Falls region. Uh, and then further to the north, we have the northern branch could ignite into the evening, into the overnight hours as we head into areas of central portions of Kansas, but especially there into Nebraska. And if you look to the east, yes, that is that severe threat as we head towards Kentucky, especially there into Virginia, where they do actually have that severe thunderstorm watch in place right now. In fact, further south into West Texas, as I was putting this update together, they did in fact issue a tornado watch for that region. So we could be looking at some larger hail producers between now and nine o'clock. If anything ignites, it's gonna quickly turn severe down there into the Big Springs region, into Snyder, back into Abilene, does include the Breckenridge region, all the way up to uh, Wichita Falls, as well as into the Childress region. They could have their own two inch hail diameter or possibly greater, and possibly one or two tornadoes is not out of the question between now and nine o'clock. But further to the north there, we do have a renewed threat, a tornado threat into the overnight hour. So this whole boundary where this low pressure is right now setting up across uh, northern portions of Colorado into Nebraska there, just to the right of there, that's the greatest lift mechanism. That's the biggest concern, especially as you get into central and northern areas of Nebraska, they could include some of those EF2 type tornadoes, that is strong tornadoes into the overnight hours, but you still can't roll out further south into portions of Oklahoma. It is more of a conditional risk because they do have a stronger capping inversion in place further uh, into Oklahoma, but further south where they do have the tornado watch and the extended hell threat, a little bit less capping inversion as you get closer to the dry line, but as you head more east and closer into the DFW region, you are gonna run running back into that capping inversion, limiting the activity as you head possibly into the Metroplex. So let's get, let's take a look at the overall radar depiction. So I think this gets going. We do looks to see, have some supercells start to ignite where that tornado watch is. 
especially possibly in the Childress region up there into Wichita Falls. They could include their own supercell thunderstorms that it could uh, some larger hail associated with them. Notice further north into Kansas, into Nebraska, nothing yet, right? And that's as of seven or eight o'clock. But I do feel as we head into the midnight time frame. So this is actually midnight, right? So we should start to see supercell thunderstorms start to ignite, ignite into Kansas, back into Nebraska region. Those have to be on high alert to include some possible tornadoes within that sector. Notice the dry slot there in Oklahoma. That's why they do have a conditional risk. Dynamics are there, but the, the strong capping inversion is, al is also there, limiting the potential activity. And notice there's not much in the Dallas Warworth area as well, because also they also have a stronger capping inversion uh, in that region. So, but going into tomorrow, I think that's going to be more of a greater concern, especially as we head towards peak heating. This could be more of a widespread event because of right now, this is also at an elevated health threat, especially into areas of Omaha, back into the Des Moines region, does include Kansas City, portions of Springfield, and even further south, not as intense, but does, does, you could include the you know, into the Little Rock region as we head into tomorrow afternoon and also that tornado threat as well. So I was kind of surprised they didn't actually expand this a little bit. I do feel this will be expanded as we head to tomorrow morning's update. But nonetheless, right now they do have a yellow shaded area that it does include potentially yet again, potentially strong tornadoes within Iowa back into northern portions of Missouri and actually has shifted a little bit into Illinois. And I feel like there are going to be shifting it further into Illinois and actually include further north into portions of Wisconsin. Even Madison uh, could get into the action with some supercell uh, thunderstorms. So as we head into noon, this is about noon time frame on Tuesday. You can see the supercells start to ignite right where that low pressure is into uh into iowa into northern portions of missouri notice there's not much there into arkansas into far northeast texas the further south you get that's where the capping inversion is going to be more likely a stronger uh, and away from that weaker so as we head into tomorrow night i think about seven eight o'clock we'll likely see that banding, that squall line, if you will, move across Iowa. I would expect tornado watches in place by then, and that will only continue to shift into Wisconsin, back into the Chicago region likely by then, and that will start to shift into Indiana, into western portions of Kentucky into tomorrow night. So if you break this thing down for you over the next 48 hours, here's the elicity tracks. This is for the greatest lift is this is where they have the tornado watch right now they're into northwest texas back into west texas there is to, could see some supercell thunderstorms there's the dry slot in oklahoma but then there's the lift in the overnight hours into kansas as well as into nebraska central central kansas central nebraska but then tomorrow there's that renewed threat a more greater of even a potentially greater threat there in iowa back into southern portions of Wisconsin, getting into Illinois and northern portions of Missouri have to be on high alert for that uh, hail and possible tornadoes within that region. And I think as we head into Wednesday, that just continues to shift further east. So now it, Indiana, further into Indiana, as well as Ohio, those areas in Kentucky, as well as into Tennessee, could have their own uh, potentially larger hail and some potentially damaging winds move through that region and that will actually shift into portions of Pennsylvania likely not severe by then but nonetheless more rain for them but it gets even a little bit more interesting on Thursday because this is another system coming through we actually are going to see a cold front diving southbound and that's going to provide renewed lift across this region as we get back into Missouri, back into Arkansas, getting into southeastern portions of Oklahoma and portions of Texas with some cooler air coming in on the backside. So this is not the stronger front, but it is going to cause potential storm initiation. You can see the actual colder air. 
This is the first initial push of cooler air for you know late April standards. So you are going to actually feel this. It's a it's going to be a noticeable front comparatively to the much warmer conditions you're going to be experiencing between now and then. But overall, look at the update, folks. I mean, this could also have their own renewed threat as we get closer to this event. We should set to see numerous supercell thunderstorms form out ahead uh, into the warm sector at ahead of this cold front there into Missouri, back into Arkansas, there in southeastern portions of Oklahoma and into Texas. This would be Thursday night. And even another threat with a secondary push of colder air. And this is the stronger push of the colder air, which also could have a renewed threat of additional lift. Now I do feel these won't be severe because I think what's coming by behind it, there's gonna be enough colder air drained in on the backside that's gonna eat it any instability quickly and just be producing more of a heavier rain threat across Oklahoma there in Texas into Louisiana and back into Arkansas. This would likely be into Saturday, Saturday afternoon with kind of a, a chillier rain and look at the surface map, definitely kind of implies that. So you have the colder anomalies up north, look at the 540 line, actually dropping all the way south into portions of Illinois. And then you have the rain prospects coming back into play over Texas and Oklahoma into Arkansas and those areas into Tennessee and pushing into northern portions of Alabama and Georgia by then. And look at the colder air that comes back behind it. This would likely be Sunday. So expect a chillier conditions, especially as we head into the weekend and then going into Sunday, you're going to feel it. Most of the country is actually going to be feeling this front, especially the central and eastern two thirds of the U.S. is definitely going to be feeling this front. And look at the actual temperatures, folks. Yeah, these are morning low temperatures as you wake up next Monday. So we're going to be seeing a big transition after we get rid of this severe threat we got monday tuesday wednesday and then now we have that thursday threat further south and then the rain further south and then the colder air comes in or if not say the cooler air yes those areas in the 40s in oklahoma 40s all the way into the southeast and 30s across the upper midwest and 30s up there into the mid-atlantic as well as into the northeast so you are going to actually feel this front but if you break down the precipitation over the next seven days it kind of looks like this look at the noticeable dry slot out west and much of the desert southwest not much of anything not even really a drop of rain everything gets going east of the dry line there in texas and oklahoma but look where they desperately need the rain unfortunately it does come with severe storms but nonetheless they will be picking up some beneficial rains one to two inches of rain there in Iowa, back into southern portions of Wisconsin, as well as into uh, you know in, into uh, Minnesota there, and then the northern portions of Illinois. There's the rain further south with those combination of the cold front, and then lighter amounts as you head into the Ohio Valley, and then work, notice the dry slot there in Florida kind of misses out on this deal on the precipitation front between now and the next seven days. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. If you like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.